was in replacement theology, but God downloaded me and delivered me from replacement theology. And God actually brought me there, and He brought me to the Mount of Olives. And we opened the Jerusalem House of Prayer for All Nations in October 1st, 1987, 30 years ago. And He said our man, main mandate was to do 24 7 where it says, I posted watchmen on your walls of Jerusalem. They should take no rest and give God no rest day or night until Jerusalem becomes a praise in the midst of the earth. So we began 24-7. That has continued nonstop uh, since that time. Well, there have been 24-7 watches throughout history, many significant ones in the past. You know, David started the tabernacle of David 24-7. The temple had 24-7. But fully functioning 24 sevens, we've documented at least 550 of them in about 100 nations of the world. There's no place in the Bible where God says He's going to restore the church. But He says He's restoring the tabernacle of David. So we thank God that He's raising up the tabernacle of David, a worldwide tent, for the purpose of seeing the fullness of the harvest come in. Well, when God called me to the Mount of Olives and I started re researching the history, I started realizing that on Jerusalem, according to Ezekiel uh, 48, there is uh, 12 gates will be on Jerusalem when the King Yeshua comes back. And they will be named after the 12 tribes of Israel. So this is a biblical foundation for the end times, a biblical paradigm for the end times. So we started praying into this paradigm of the 12 gates. But then I also researched and I realized that the, not only on the day of Pentecost, 10, year, 10 days after Yeshua ascended to heaven and the Holy Spirit was poured out, not only did Peter preach the gospel and 3,000 got saved on the steps of the Temple Mount on the day of Pentecost. But also, when Yeshua gave the Great Commission on the Mount of Olives, the gospel, the apostles went out in 12 directions, into 12 gateways in the nations. So our paradigm of prayer is based on the 12 tribes of Israel, but also the 12 apostles that were sent out in 12 directions. We know that these are also the foundations of the New Jerusalem in the book of Revelation. But we felt that God's bring, we need to bring the future into the now and pray into the paradigm of the 12 apostles that were sent out and the 12 tribes of Israel. So the great commission that was given in Acts 1-8 took the apostles in 12 directions. They went into Europe and into the Isaiah 19 nations, and then the gospel went to the ends of the earth. But today we have what we call the Back to Jerusalem movement. This is championed by the Koreans and the, the Chinese, uh, but it's not only coming from this part of the world. The Back to Jerusalem movement is something that's coming from all the ends of the earth, all the gateways. The gospel is coming back to Jerusalem. And that's why we see today the greatest revivals in the world are not yet in the center of the world, but they're in the outside of the world. When you look at what God's doing in uh, Ukraine, big revival in Ukraine, United States, many believers, Latin America, some nations, 50% believers, Brazil, 30% believers. And uh, I was in a prayer meeting, a meeting where I spoke and led prayer in Nigeria. Four million Christians were gathered together praying all night. And uh, they're actually building a church building in Korea right now for four million people, one church building. We think the churches in Korea, are, in Korea are big churches and they're the biggest in the world. But now they're building one for four million people in Lagos, Nigeria. So God is moving in an awesome way there. We see in southern India there's a great move of God. China, there may be a hundred million believers. And now Indonesia today, 
uh, 30% believers. Philippines, there's a great move of God right now. Amen. Praise God. God's moving also in Korea in an amazing way. Amen. We know he moved in a powerful way here in the past, but we believe God is going to anoint the younger generation. There's generation reconciliation happening right now between the fathers and the children. And we believe God's going to restore many of the, the house of uh that have gone away into the world in the younger generation that God's going to rescue them and bring them back into the kingdom and set them on fire. And there's going to be a major move of God among the youth and the younger generation again in Korea. So we see this circle of fire going around the world. Even now, Japan is coming into this circle of fire, which has been totally not open to the gospel, but now they're beginning to open up. So when this circle of fire is completed around the world, the gospel of the kingdom is going to be released from the ends of the earth back to Jerusalem. And praise God, we see the last frontier as the Isaiah 19 nations in Europe, which are the center of the world. Uh, there's 750 million people in the Isaiah 19 highway nation, 750 million in Europe. 20% of the population is the center of the world where the gospel went to in the first century. But it's been the, the area of the world that's the least evangelized today. But praise God, to get back to Jerusalem from Korea, you got to go through the Isaiah 19 nations. To get back to Jerusalem from Brazil, you have to go through Europe. And so we know that the gospel of the kingdom is going to triumph through Europe and through the Isaiah 19 nations to go back to Jerusalem. And praise God, when the fullness of the Gentiles come in from, the, from Korea, and from Japan, and from Asia, and from the Isaiah 19 countries, the Arab nations, and from Europe, praise God, then the Jewish people are going to receive Yeshua as their king, and, the, and they will say, Baruch Abah, B'Shem Adonai, and they will recognize Yeshua as their Messiah. They will receive him, and then the king will come back to the Mount of Olives, and he will go through the Golden Gate and take up the throne of, on, sit on David's throne and reign as king of Jerusalem, king of Israel, king of Korea, king of Saudi Arabia, and king of Israel and king of the whole world. So we thank God that we're in the last days and our primary commission is the Great Commission. God's commissioned us to bring the Jews home. I wrote a book on Aliyah called Let My People Go that are a million copies in print. And we've been working very strong for Aliyah, for the return of the Jewish people from all the nations of the world. In the last few years, we've sponsored flights from India, from China, from uh, Ukraine, from France. And this year, we're going to sponsor one from Brazil. Uh, and many from the U.S. and from the... Especially, we're working to bring back the younger generation between 18 and 25, because we want to help the people come back that are in the younger generation that can invest their whole life in Israel. It's great to sponsor people coming at 80, 90 years old, but we, the Lord showed us, invest in bringing the people back that can spend their whole life in Israel and, their, and bring the, the transition of the salvation of Israel and help to bring Aliyah back to the land of Israel. So this is great to help with Aliyah. But our first mandate is to help to see the fulfillment of the Great Commission of the people coming back to their land and back to their Messiah. 조금 전에 컨버케이션 얘기를 하셨는데 매년 그 컨버케이션이 열리죠. 그 컨버케이션에 대해서 좀 구체적으로 좀 설명을 해주시죠. We began the All Nations Convocation in 1994. This was one of the things that God downloaded with us after we did seven years of 24/7. He said, not only call the leaders of Jerusalem and Israel in the Middle East, but once a year to call an all-nations convocation. So the time he showed us to do this is Rosh Hashanah, which is the Feast of Trumpets, and now is the Jewish New Year as well, until the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur, and then until Sukkot, the Feast of Tabernacles. So we have 10 days in Jerusalem where many things are happening, but we have 20 different tracks going on at the same time. Uh, and then we have the main track. But we also call it the last day's upper room. Because it's interesting that from Rosh Hashanah to Yom Kippur is 10 days just like it was from the Ascension to the day of Pentecost. So every year since 1994, the whole world is coming together. Representations on an average of 160 nations every year. One year, in the year 2000, we actually had 200 nations were there at the same time. 
But we convene what we call the last day's upper room, where we have 24-7 going on, like in the house of prayer year-round, but we move it for 10 days to the hotel, and there's an average of about 200 people every two hours from their gateway that are praying. So the Lion's Gate, Korea is in the Lion's Gate. So usually in the Lion's Gate, we have about 400 people praying because it's so many people want to come from the Lion's Gate. And so they're praying every day from 4 to 6 in the morning during the convocation. And it's incredible the breakthroughs that we've seen between the Chinese and the Koreans and the, and the Japanese. And there's a very strong anointing on the Lion's Gate. The Lion of the tribe of Judah is roaring over the Lion's Gate. And we know that also Iran is in the Lion's Gate. So it's very important to pray for Iran as well, uh, that God will stop their... Uh, demonic attack against the Jewish people and against the world. So God is answering prayers, amen, over the lion's gate. So if you come to the convocation, we welcome you from uh, Korea this year. You can join in in the lion's gate watch. It's the most awesome watch in the convocation. 결국은 컨버케이션 때 이제 전 세계 많은 사람들이 모여서 예루살렘의 평화를 위해서 기도하는 것일 텐데 목사님께서 생각하시는 진정한 의미의 예루살렘 평화, 우리가 예루살렘의 평화를 위해서 기도하는 것, 뭐라고 생각하십니까? Well, people have different ideas of what is the meaning of the peace of Jerusalem. Unfortunately, there is a, a very strong Babylonian uh, New Age movement that's happening all over the world. It's connected with religion, uh, and so many people in the world today believe that if you can bring Islam Judaism and Christianity together, that you can have peace by uniting all these religions, that this is the way to bring peace. But according to the Bible, this is a big deception. Because it said, even Jesus himself, Yeshua himself said, uh, you do not know the way of peace. And he said, in me you have peace, in the world you have tribulation. Be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. So we see that there will develop a false peace movement, which the, the, the powers of this world have been trying to bring about for a long time, a false peace. Uh, and unfortunately, this will happen according to the Bible. There will be a false peace, uh, but this peace will not last. And this peace will actually bring, the Antichrist will come into, uh, into existence, and he will uh, try to bring, he will make a covenant, and the covenant will be broken in the middle of the covenant, and then uh, the king of glory will come, the true king will come. So people are crying, peace, peace, but it says then will come destruction. So true peace is only through one person, and it's the Prince of Peace, it's King Jesus, is the only one that will bring true peace to Jerusalem. So if we're going to see, we will only see peace come to Jerusalem to the degree that Jews and Arabs are reconciled to the king, Jesus, and to one another. And so that's why if we're going to work towards peace, the gospel of the kingdom of God is the key to peace coming to Jerusalem and coming to, to Israel and the Middle East. There's no other uh, way for peace. Only through the cross, the power of the cross, will true peace come to Jerusalem. So we won't have true peace in our day any more than we see the Jews and the Arabs be reconciled to God and reconciled to one another because he is the Prince of Peace, he is the King of Peace, and there's no other way through peace other than through the power of the cross. So that's why we're encouraged to see more and more Arabs, more and more Jews, uh, recognizing the King of Glory, recognizing him as the Prince of Peace, and as this movement grows, it will bring true peace uh, even though there will be great opposition and great conflicts, true peace is only in the person of the Messiah. We pray that God will diffuse violence and that we will live in a sense of harmony as much as possible as Jews and Arabs together. But we know that the only hope for true peace is the power of the cross of Jesus and the blood of Yeshua being shed as the true uh, Prince of Peace. And so we need to preach the gospel. This is the answer for Jerusalem. This is the answer for Israel. This is the answer for the Middle East. And so it's so encouraging to see millions of Muslims coming into the kingdom of God. Many Jewish people recognizing their king and Messiah. And so the more this happens, the more we're coming to the time of peace in the Middle East. But we know that it will end with the coming of the king of glory. Because in Jerusalem, 
when the mosque was built, it's written around the mosque in the top in Arabic, there's only one God. He has no son. His name is Allah, and he has no son. So we know that the mosque in Jerusalem is something that's written against the God of Israel and against the Messiah. So we know that there will be a false Messiah will sit in Jerusalem. But praise God, he will not be there very long. Because when the King of Glory comes, he will blow him away. And he will blow open the Golden Gate. And he will take up David's throne and sit on David's throne. When, when this happens, they're not going to have the first uh, Baptist church or the fourth Presbyterian church on the Temple Mount. It's, God is not going to restore the church. He is restoring the kingdom to Israel. His prayer was not, thy church come on earth as it is in heaven, but thy kingdom come on it as, as it is in heaven. So the kingdom of God is the message for the end times. Jesus only mentioned the church two times. He said, I will build my church, and he talked about church discipline. But he mentioned the kingdom of God 120 times. So his message from the Beatitudes, from the Sermon on the Mount, through the parables, to the last 40 days that he preached was about the kingdom of God. This was his whole message. And in Korea, we need to come back to the message of the kingdom. Because the church is not eternal, but the kingdom is eternal. And when, when, when Jesus comes back, there will be no denominations. There will be one king. He will be king over Jerusalem, king over Israel, king over his people all over the world. He will be the king of all nations. So we need to focus on the kingdom and the prayer of Jesus that thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This is the message of the king, and this should be our message. And when we align ourselves with the king, and his message of the kingdom, we will see many things changing in church life. Our priorities will come into divine order, into kingdom priorities, which is what the king wants us to do. And so may God help us in the church in Korea and all over the world to preach his message, which he preached 120 times, the message of the kingdom. And thank God he's building the church, but he's restoring the tabernacle of David, and he's going to restore the kingdom to Israel. That's why he's not coming back to New York. He's not coming back to Seoul. He's not coming back to Paris. He's coming back to Jerusalem to set up his kingdom, the center of his kingdom where he will reign over Jerusalem, Israel, and the whole world from Jerusalem. 그런가 하면은 예루살렘의 평화를 방해하는 걸림돌이 10개가 있다, 10가지가 있다 이렇게 목사님이 쓰신 책에 나오는데 그 중에서도 예루살렘의 평화를 방해하는 그큰 걸림돌 중에 하나가 바로 이 대체 신학과 반유대주의라고 이렇게 얘기를 하셨어요. 2017년은 이제 마틴 루터 종교 개혁 500주년으로 사람들이 기념을 한다라고 하는데 우리가 이 반유대주의 얘기하면 또 마틴 루터를 얘기하지 않을 수 없거든요. 그 부분에 대해서도 좀 소개를 해 주시죠. Replacement theology and anti-Semitism has been a problem going on ever since the first centuries when uh, the Jewish people were Jerusalem was destroyed and the Jewish people were scattered all over the world. And then because Jerusalem was destroyed and Israel was destroyed, people started believing anti-Semitism because they say it was destroyed and so, you know, God uh, rejected the Jewish people. So this has been going on from the first centuries. It's nothing new. Uh, but we see that people like uh, Martin Luther, many of the church fathers, were uh, into replacement theology. But Martin Luther, uh, while he was received the Lord and he was a great blessing to the Gentiles with releasing the message of the Reformation and justification by faith, unfortunately, he carried with him the baggage of the Catholic Church in regards to the Jewish people. He never rejected this. And we know that he got very upset uh, when the Jewish people refused to receive Jesus, he said their tongues should be cut out from their mouths, they should be deported from Germany, and that they should be uh, destroyed. You know, So he was very much against the Jewish people because they rejected the Messiah. And we know that uh, Adolf Hitler used this very teaching to justify the Holocaust, as you show, so well show in the movie that you're releasing. And so we believe this is a very, very important uh, release of this uh, this production to help the church to be delivered from replacement theology, especially in the year of the 500 years 
of the Reformation. This year, when many people are thinking about Martin Luther, and we thank God for the blessing that he was to the church, but unfortunately he was a curse to the Jewish people. And my prayer is that through this DVD, that many people's uh, eyes will be enlightened and the replacement theology will be removed from the church in the nation of Korea and in other nations. Because once they see the deception and the blindness and what the, the radical demonic effect that his words had upon Adolf Hitler in launching the Holocaust, we believe that God will remove the blindness of replacement theology from many Christians all over the church in Korea. May God use this film as a watershed breakthrough for many Koreans to be delivered from replacement theology and many Christians around the world to stand for God's covenant with Israel in the last days. 그럼 우리가 어떻게 해야 이 반유대주의 대체 신학을 극복해 나갈 수 있을까요? Well, I believe that um, unfortunately uh, this is something demonic. And uh, so I'm not sure that it's going to be totally overcome. But the the sad thing is that it exists in the church. Because replacement theology and anti-Semitism should have no part of the church. Because our roots, the roots of the church are in the prophets, in the Bible, in God's covenant with Israel. And I believe that if people understand that our covenant and our, the roots of our faith are in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, if they can get this revelation you know, like some people just teach from the New Testament. They don't teach from the Old Testament. But the Bible does not say that we're the children of Jesus by faith. The Bible says we're the children of Abraham by faith. So our roots go back to Abraham. Our faith begins with Abraham because it says even Abraham, the gospel was preached to him in advance and he believed the gospel in Galatians. So praise God, he was justified by faith. Abraham was justified by faith. And our faith begins with Father Abraham. And so we're called the children of Abraham by faith. So our faith goes back to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. So I see that the olive tree, the roots of the olive tree are King Yeshua. He is the root of the olive tree. The trunk is Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And then there's the lineage of these people coming forth from that time. And so we need to understand that the roots of our faith are not Jesus being born in Bethlehem, but the roots of our faith is that King Yeshua is the eternal Son of God. So he's the one that made covenant with Abraham. As King Melchizedek, he made covenant with Abraham. And so he, and it says that he is the root and the offspring of David. He's not only the offspring of David, he's the root of David. So our faith is rooted in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Yeshua as the eternal King Melchizedek. And so we have to understand that the roots of our faith go back to Abraham. They didn't begin with just with Jesus. So uh, as the people of God, we are one people rooted in Father Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, in the birth of Israel. So we have to understand that the covenant began with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It began with King Melchizedek making covenant with Abraham. And if we see things from the covenantal perspective of God's kingdom from the beginning, we will uh, be delivered from replacement theology. I'd like to say one other thing. I know that the Presbyterian Church, which is the largest church in uh, Korea, believes in covenant theology. I also believe in covenant theology. But the problem is, a covenant theology not only has to do with righteousness and salvation, but covenant theology has to do with the land. So if you read in Genesis, it says that the covenant justified Abraham by faith, but the same covenant was made from the land, from the Nile to the Euphrates. So the Garden of Eden was there in this region. But when it fell down, Abraham made covenant not only for righteousness, but also with the land of Israel. So we can't, replacement theology says that the Bible has nothing to do with the land.
But covenant theology, according to the Bible, has to do with the land and salvation, with both. Even when you go to Isaiah 62, it says that we should be watchmen on the walls day and night of Jerusalem until Jerusalem becomes a praise in the midst of the earth. But the two verses before that say that, that we should do this until the land is married to the Lord and until the people are married to the Lord. So 24-7 is not just to do with salvation, but it has to do until the land is married with the Lord. In other words, when King Yeshua comes back, there will be the marriage supper of the Lamb. But praise God, he's going to be married to the land, not only to his bride, but to the land. And it says the place of the Temple Mount will be the place of the soles of his feet forever. So now there's a covenant with Yeshua and his bride, his people, uh, and there's a covenant with Yeshua and the land. But praise God, when he comes back, the marriage will take place. He will be married to his bride, but he also will be married to the land. So that's why he says that we should pray day and night until the land is married to the king and until the people are married to the king. So we have to understand that while I believe in covenant theology, I believe it's biblical theology, it's king, what I call kingdom covenant theology, we have to understand that it has to do not only with righteousness, but it has to do with the land of Israel. And the city of Jerusalem. 2017년은 한국이나 이스라엘이나 여러 가지 의미가 있는 해입니다. 한국도 정부 수립 70주년이 되는 해이고요. 또 이스라엘도 정부 수립 70주년 되는 해이고 이럴 때에 예루살렘에서 이번 가을에 열리는 컨베케이션 한국 사람들이 참여하는 게 굉장히 많은 의미가 있을 것 같습니다. 이번에 한국 사람들이 컨베케이션에 많이 참석할 것 같은데 한국의 크리스천들이 그 컨베케이션 가서 Yes, this is a very, very significant year to come up to Jerusalem, especially for the Korean Christians. Because this year represents two things. It represents, first of all, it's the Jubilee of Jerusalem. This year is the Jubilee year for Jerusalem, the year of the double portion, the year of blessings. And so for Korean Christians to come up to Jerusalem to stand with a unified Jerusalem as King Yeshua is the king of a unified Jerusalem means that they're also standing and believing for a breakthrough for Korea to become one again. Secondly, this year and this convocation is the convocation that represents not only the reunification of Jerusalem, but this year represents the birth of the nation of South Korea, which for the seven years will be completed on the 10th of May, uh, 2018. So this is the last convocation before the 10th of May, 2018. And four days later, on the 14th, of May 2018 is when Israel was born. So to come up and stand in the gates of Jerusalem, this convocation, celebrating the reunification of Jerusalem, believing for the reunification of Korea, and to stand in the gap in the year, just four days apart, that the nation of South Korea was born and the nation of Israel was born in their 70th year of both na nations is a very, very significant thing to do because you're believing God that you will be grafted into the Commonwealth of Israel and you're celebrating, uh, you know, your nation, but you're celebrating the restoration of Israel after 70 years, a generation being completed and believing that there will be one Korea and one king and together you will be grafted into the Commonwealth of Israel after 70 years and that the nation of Korea will be reunited and that uh, the replacement theology will be removed from the church. And we pray that this new uh, video will be a great breakthrough for this happening in Korea. And we're believing that there's going to be at least 300 a Gideon's army coming up from Korea in uh, from the 20th of September till the 4th of October and for a big breakthrough for Korea. 
and for Israel in their year of in their 70th year joined together in the year of jubilee of Jerusalem. So we warmly welcome you from all over Korea. Christians from all over Korea, from all denominations. Uh, God loves all the denominations. There's one king and one kingdom, but the believers are in all the denominations. So we warmly welcome all of you to come up to Jerusalem this year. We say this year in Jerusalem, and we pray for the breakthrough for Israel, the fullness of the breakthrough for Korea in this awesome year of 70 years and the Jer Jerusalem's Jubilee. God bless you from Jerusalem. 오늘 아주 귀한 시간 내주셔서 좋은 얘기 해주셔서 고맙습니다. 원래도 제가 예루살렘 기도의 지이 굉장히 귀한 곳이라는 것은 알고 있었지만 오늘 이렇게 또 하나씩 목사님으로부터 직접 그곳에서 이루어지는 놀라운 하나님의 역사 이야기를 들으니까 다시 또 보입니다. 저도 다음에 또 이스라엘 가면 또 다시 들러보도록 하고요. 또 금년에 있게 되는 컨버테이션 때 우리 프리뷰티비도 가서 함께 할수 있기를 바라고 그때 또 뵙도록 하죠. 오늘 이렇게 귀한 시간 내주시고 좋은 얘기 해주셔서 고맙습니다. 감사합니다. 땡큐. Tell us, when will these things be, and what will be the sign of your coming, and of the end of the age? That we are living in the end time right now. I'm not telling you the end time is coming. I'm telling you, you live in it right now. We are at the, the generation for which these prophecies were preserved. and more frequently now than ever. Well, the new world order is simply world government and it's forming right now. Furthermore, it's the world government prophesied in the Bible. World government obviously suggests that you've got a single capital somewhere and a single flag and presumably a single national anthem and the sovereignty of all other nations is subordinated to that name for this event called the abomination of desolation because Almighty God said he would place his name in Jerusalem and on the Temple Mount. Starting with verse number one. In verse number 11, Daniel, you don't have to guess, because verse 24, when we get to verse number nine of Daniel chapter 12, God answers his prayer. To all the wonderful people of Korea, I've heard wonderful things about your nation. I've heard that it's a place where spirituality can really prosper. I produced a DVD series called Understanding the End Time. It's 14 DVDs. It deals with the United States, Great Britain, Russia, Germany, and the countries of Europe in the Bible. It teaches which countries are gonna end up becoming a part of the one world government over which the Antichrist will rule. There's a prophecy in there about communism, capitalism, Islamism, Catholicism, wonderful prophecy that's so astounding. There's a prophecy about where the Antichrist will come from, where the false prophet will come from, 
all these things you need to know. And most of all, the prophecy about the second coming of Jesus Christ and how you can know for sure that we're living in the era of the second coming. So if you're out there and you've never seen Understand the End Time, I would just urge you, at least look at the first lesson. If after that you don't think it's credible, then don't worry about it. But I don't think that'll happen to you. I think once you see the first lesson, you're going to realize that the prophecies of the Bible are coming to pass right now. And all I can say to you, listen to it, pay attention to it, check your Bible, and I'm hoping to someday come to Korea so that I can speak to you face to face. Until then, watch the Understanding Time series. God bless you.